Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Reliability sample size calculation with binomial distribution and with few failures. In this video, we will have a quick overview of the binomial distribution and then we will explain the mathematical formula to calculate reliability for a specified sample size at a desired confidence level when certain number of failures are observed and how the success run theorem can be derived from this. We will also illustrate the above calculations on Microsoft Excel. And then we will illustrate the calculation of sample size on Microsoft Excel for a specified reliability which is to be demonstrated at a given confidence level. Let us understand a little bit of mathematics of binomial distribution. Suppose P is the probability of success in a single trial. Then let us assume that Q which equals 1 minus P is probability of not getting success in a single trial. Then probability of getting R successes in N trials is given by NCR P raised to R Q raised to N minus R where NCR is the combinations of N taken R at a time and that equals factorial N divided by factorial R, factorial N minus R. For binomial distribution, P must be independent and constant for every trial. In case viewers are not familiar with binomial distribution, we recommend that you watch our video on binomial distribution before watching this video. Link is available in the description of this video. Let us understand the mathematics of binomial distribution application to reliability and sample size calculations. Suppose R is the probability of success or reliability of a single sample for time t. If there are n trials and f number of failures, then confidence level C is the probability of n minus f successes. Thus, 1 minus confidence level C will be the probability of not achieving those many or n minus f successes. As 1 minus reliability, 1 minus r will be the probability of failure in a single trial, probability of f or fewer failures in n trials will be given by 1 minus confidence level and that equals summation of i is equal to 0 to f, 1 minus reliability raised to the power i into reliability raised to the power n minus i. In one of our previous videos, we have seen application of the success run theorem. Now let us see some mathematical part of the success run theorem. For zero failures, i equals zero and therefore the previous equation reduces to 1 minus c, c being the confidence level equals nc0 1 minus reliability r raised to the power 0 and r raised to n. But nc0 is equal to 1 because factorial 0 is 1. Therefore, 1 minus c equals r raised to n. Taking logarithms, we can write natural logarithm ln of 1 minus c equals n into ln r. And therefore, sample size n equals ln 1 minus c upon ln r or that is equal to ln alpha upon ln r, alpha being the producer's risk, which equals 1 minus confidence level c. This is the formula used for success run theorem. From this equation of zero failures, i is equal to zero, we can also calculate reliability at a specified confidence level C. We have seen that 1 minus confidence level C equals reliability raised to the power n. We will say at a given confidence level C. 
Therefore, reliability at a given confidence level C, RC, equals 1 minus confidence level C raised to the power of 1 upon N. In case you have not watched our video on success run theorem and using templates, watch it now. Link is provided in the description of this video. We will now explain the reliability and sample size calculation procedure with an illustration. A company designs and manufactures electric switches. A typical switch is operated by the users at an average of 10 times a day. For a target beaten life of 3 years, this works out to be 365 into 10 into 3, that is 10,950 cycles. We can round this off to 11,000 cycles. Question 1. They have tested 25 switches for 11,000 cycles each and observed one failure. What reliability they have demonstrated at 90% confidence level? And question 2. How many switches they should test for demonstration of beaten life of 3 years, that is 11,000 cycles? Let us solve the first part. Reliability with 25 switches and one failure. The binomial formula is given by 1 minus C equals summation of I is equal to 0 to the number of failures F and CI 1 minus R raised to the power I and R raised to the power N minus I. They have tested 25 switches for 11,000 cycles each and observed one failure. Confidence level is 90%. In this case, sample size n is equal to 25, number of failures f is equal to 1, and confidence level c is equal to 90% or 0.9. And we want to calculate r. We will illustrate this now on Excel using the formula for cumulative binomial distribution. Let us now see how to calculate the reliability using Microsoft Excel. I have created a table suitable for this calculation in which I fill in the value of n sample size 25. Reliability I will start with some value which is not the final value. Using this value we will calculate the confidence level. Number of failures is 1. Now we will calculate the confidence level C using the lower formula. C is equal to 1 minus summation of i is equal to 0 to f, 1 minus r raised to i, r raised to n minus i. So we say equal to 1 minus binom dot test. Number s is the number of failures, comma trials. So we select the cell with trials that is 25. Then we select the cell with probability. The probability is 1 minus r, remember. So we have to select 1 minus the cell with reliability 0.8, comma, true for cumulative. This binomial formula will give us a probability of failures 0 to 1. And we are subtracting it from 1, that is here 1 minus binom disk, to calculate the confidence level. So this gives us a confidence level of 0.9726. But we want confidence level of 0.9. So what we can change is the value of reliability 0.8. Suppose I make it 0.85. Then I get a confidence level of 0.9069. We can do this by trial and error with different values of reliability. But a simple idea could be using the solver function in Excel. For using that, we click on the data command, click on the solver, set objective of this cell confidence level to a value of 0.9, which is the confidence level 90%. By changing which cell we want to change, we want to change the cell of reliability. And we'll say solve, and we get a value of 0.853. We can keep the solver solution. So for getting the confidence level of 90%, and with sample size of 25 and with one failure, we can say that the reliability 
that can be estimated is 0.853. We can reduce the number of decimals up to three decimals. So reliability is 0.853. The second question was, part two was, how many switches they should test for beaten life of three years, that is 11,000 cycles. Let us understand that beaten life corresponds to reliability of 90%. So we want to determine the sample size for achieving reliability of 90% for three years life. So we now want to achieve reliability of 90% for beaten life. Now we input reliability of 0.9 and see what confidence level we get for that. Right now we are getting 0.7288. So we now need to increase the sample size to get a confidence level of 90%. So let us say I make it 30. Then I get a confidence level of 0.81. To determine the sample size, we can make a table of sample size versus achieved confidence level. Let us say we start the sample size with 25, then 26, and then we increase further. Let us say we increase up to 45, 45, and then we calculate the confidence level corresponding to each sample size. Now we calculate the confidence level for each sample size. So we use the same formula as before, equal to one minus binom dist. The number S is the number of failures, but we must select function F4 to make sure that it is $C, $5, the same cell is used in all formula when we copy it, number of trials is the sample size in that row that is E3, the probability is 1 minus reliability that is 1 minus 0.9 but again function F4 is required here and finally true. So. So we can get the confidence level for all sample sizes and we have to check where we are crossing the 0.9. We can see that for 37 it is 0.89 and then for 38 it is 0.9047. So if I mark these two cells, we can say that the sample size is 38 because then you get the desired confidence level of 0.9. So if you make that change here, you will of course see that here also. Let us do a recap of the video. We had a quick overview of the binomial distribution. We have explained the mathematical formula to calculate reliability for a specified sample size at a desired confidence level when certain number of failures are observed and how the success run theorem can be derived from this formula. The use of formula was illustrated on Microsoft Excel with an application example of a switch. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on Reliability Engineering, Six Sigma and Quality Engineering.